Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about my indoor worm farm. And today we have got a huge harvest to do in my 55 gallon worm bin we call Blue. Uh, first things first, um, I am going to use a sift that uh, I do have on Amazon that you can buy if you like them. They held up really well. I've had them for over five years. We've got a half inch one here and a quarter inch one here that I will be using. And we need to make a lot of room in blue today because he's going to eat another bin pretty soon. Today we're also going to discuss long-term um, casting storage and how I keep the microbes and everything happy until I need the castings in the spring. Uh, that will also include putting some worm traps in with the castings to catch any of the baby worms that hatch from the cocoons that slip through, as well as feeding the microbes in the bin to keep them viable until the spring. So. Stick with me, this is going to be a long one. So first things first, most of the time I try to keep all of the large stuff towards the feeding end of the bin, but today since I'm trying to uh, do a really big harvest and not, I don't want to leave much behind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sift first with the big one to get the big chunks out and put in the bin that I'll show you and then we'll do the smaller screen because that will leave us, leave me the finest screenings. And that is how I like to do things. I prefer to have something that looks kind of like uh, seed starting mixed when I get done. I don't need or I don't want all these chunks in there, but if you do, uh, it is totally fine to just throw this in your garden. But if you wanna take that extra step like I do to make sure that I don't have any seeds hatching or anything, um, then this is the process that I take, and uh, if you like it, you can do it too. So basically I want to get all of the big chunks out so that it doesn't clog the smaller screen. And generally when I'm working on the bin, if you're not new here, then you know I kind of grab up big chunks and I toss them to the other end. These are the ones that just didn't, you know, I didn't see them. So I shouldn't have to do too much of this because I do take those proactive steps. And then if I do see any like stickers or plastic that somehow made it in here, I do have a little bin off to the side over there where I can toss them if I see them. Sometimes people will tell me, they're like, oh, you missed, you missed a sticker. And I'm like, yeah, I, I usually, I'll catch it when I'm editing the video. And I'll be like, well, I guess I'll catch it next time. Um, worm farm isn't about, worm farming is not, that's an eggshell, it's not a sticker. It's not about being perfect. Um, it honestly just, you know, the worms, the temperature, the environment that you live in honestly dictates a lot of what you do as a worm farmer. And if you try and, you know, make the worm farm do what you want it to do, you're just going to set yourself up for aggravation. All right, so that's good. We're actually getting a lot of the big chunks out. And I'm going to show you what I do with my leftovers uh, a little bit later. But as you can tell, these are all pretty dried out and you're not seeing very many worms at all. And that is by design of the wedge system that I'm running them in here. As it dries out, the the castings get drier and also the worms will move out and go to the part where there's some food down this way. So that is why you're not seeing a bunch of worms. There's, there's a couple stragglers here and there, but for the most part, the worms move out of this portion of the bin. And if it gets too wet, basically, then it just turns into little balls. And also if you get into the part that's not ready to harvest, you also have worms. If you see this little green ball here, this is a compostable trash bag. And it has been in my bin for possibly three years. <laughs> so just because something says that it is compostable does not mean it is worm compostable, unfortunately. 
I did have a little bit of success um, putting them in the microwave and nuking them before I put them in the worm bin. That was a little bit more successful uh, to get rid of the bioplastic or, or whatever they call it. I did not find it to be particularly useful in the worm bins. It just turns into little balls and it's going to be there forever. I mean, possibly if anybody knows of a, a new kind of compostable trash bag that does not have that problem, please put it in the comments below. I would be very interested to know where you get it, etc. And does it work in the worm composting bins or not? Okay, now I'm going to move over to the quarter inch. And this still will not catch all of the cocoons. It'll catch some of the bigger ones, but it will not catch the little ones. So I am just going to sift everything onto this little tray here and get all of the overs, kind of scrub them through just a little bit. I don't want to scrub them through too much because I don't want to, you know, harm any of the cocoons that are left behind because when I have this in the leftovers bin, I'm gonna rehydrate everything and any of the cocoons that are in here will hatch and will start eating the stuff again, as will any of the little tiny worms that are making it on top of the screen here. And if you do use these screens, it actually goes faster if you don't put as much on, on the screen because it kind of clogs the pores. My goal here is to do about 10 gallons worth. Um, I'm probably gonna shut up at some point so that I can speed this up so you don't have to watch me do every single pan worth. But I did wanna let you know that the goal is to harvest almost half of this. I wanna make sure that I have a large enough area that all the worms that I'm going to be adding to blue and have been adding to blue over the last couple of months have room to roam and eat.
this is what the finished castings for me look like. If you look really closely, you might be able to see some cocoons in there. Um, but we'll get to what we're going to do with them in a little bit. So now we have to move all of this stuff down here, but not before making sure to fluff this so that I can continue harvesting in the future. Make sure there's enough air in here. Then we start moving this over. And because I have been adding more worms to this bin to dry out, it is not to, unexpected that there are more worms than usual in this part of the bin. Generally after it's been sitting for a month or two, this part is almost completely worm free. Um, but we've we've given blue quite a bit of quite a bit of uh, work to do in the way of drying out other bins casting, so not unexpected. But they will slowly move down. So as things as they finish up the food and as the moisture starts getting lower, they will move. Works really well. It's not a fast system. You're not getting casting super fast in the beginning. Once it's been running for about six months to a year, you can harvest a gallon or so castings every week, or you can wait and do it every couple of months and get a couple of gallons like I'm doing right now. But as you can see, up turning the bottom here, that's much wetter than what I was working with a minute ago. So these deep bins do run quite a bit differently than than other static bins. So we're gonna we're gonna keep fluffing and keep building because uh, Blue has another bin to eat here in the near future. Doing some rearranging, major rearranging in the wormery down here to make some room. And Blue gets to be the benefactor and uh, gets all of his relatives back that I've stolen for, from various different experiments. So this is good there. It's not super dense with worms right now, but it is good. So as soon as I get this moved over, then we're going to talk about long-term storage of castings because it is uh, mid-December here. In fact, it is my birthday. And I am down here playing with my worms. I mean, what's a better gift? Playing with my worms. So we are going to talk about long-term storage of worm castings and how do you keep them viable because the NPK of worm castings is not nearly as important as the biology that lives within the castings, that comes from the microbial and fungal life in the castings. That is, you know, I think, according to the books that I've read, the digestion of the food items in the gut of the worm. And so the added enzymes benefit the bacteria and the fungus, making the entire system much more um, capable of mining all sorts. Of so worm castings biology are actually what mines the nutrients out of the soil that that you're growing your items in. So whether it's tomatoes or peppers or asparagus, um, the worm castings are actually breaking down more things in your soil so that you don't have to add chemical fertilizers with the NPK as much. I mean, I still do a little bit. I have some really dense plantings that still require, you know, a dose of 10, 10, 10 every once in a while, but uh, not very much. I don't I probably buy one bag a year and that's mostly for the fruit trees. All right, so we're getting into stuff that probably was fed two months ago now. And the density of the worms and the moisture is quite high at this end. But we do need to uh, keep the wedge moving. Oh, cork. And so as soon as I get to this midline over here, then we will stop and we'll start talking about castings. But the, you know, the work of the day, I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, you yammer on. Well, 
the truth of the matter is I have a worm farm and I have work to do. <laughs> so uh, I think one of the persons was like, oh, you just yammer on longer so there can be more commercials. Nope. I'm taking you with me um, as I do all of my work in the, in the worm farm. So this is something that's going to happen whether I film it or not. And a lot of people have said that they enjoy it and that also it's calming that they, they enjoy watching me play in my worm, worm bins. So this is how long it takes. Some of this will have been sped up, but I've already been working on this for about 40 minutes. And this is something that I do for this bin every three weeks to a month. I do the complete fluff once a month is the goal. Um, depending upon life, that might be sooner or later. But the goal is to completely flip it at least once a month to get the air in there. I'm starting to see leaves and uh, food that's, uh, you know, more recognizable. So I think it's about ready to stop with the, the moving. Oops, sticker. And we'll mound this up here and then we are going to talk about how I manage to keep all these castings that I harvest week over week uh, viable until the spring when I really need them. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to build some worm traps. And here are my little worm traps. These are just sour cream containers that I have taken a soldering iron and poked holes in it outside because it stinks and you shouldn't breathe that in. But uh, but not at the bottom because you don't want all the juices to, to leave. You want them to stay in the cup so the worms are attracted to the cup and stay in the cup so you can harvest them and put them back in your bin. So first things first, get a little bit of wet bedding in the bottom so that it can collect all of the juices from the pumpkin. And then we're going to take our tiny little pieces of pumpkin here and kind of shred them up or puree them, whatever, whatever works for you. And make a good layer in here so that they have something nice and uh, soft for them to eat. Gonna fill that about halfway. And you can use bananas or melon or, or whatever you have that's a uh, fast food. That's your goal is you want it to be fast food. Um, I have used like apple puree before and that just didn't work. It did not have the right oomph to get the worms to go. And then you kind of cap it off with more bedding so that they are enticed to come in through the holes in the side and not in... Um, you know, the top will be still buried, but you don't want them to, to exit. You want them to stay in there. All right, so then let's look at the castings. So this is a good size bin. I add time, I add to it over and over again. And uh, one of the key parts to getting all of the, the castings to stay good for a long period of time, the key is moisture and feeding the microbes. So first things first, let's get them some moisture. I dried these out a little bit on purpose so that I could sift and get rid of the chunks. But when you're trying to store them, you, you don't need them as wet as you do when you're trying to grow worms or house worms, however you want to say that. A normal worm bin should be wetter than this but you're just trying to keep the microbes happy, not necessarily have a worm farm. And then if any of the, the baby worms hatch, then they're gonna wanna go to these traps. And uh, then they'll have a nice place to live until you rescue them and put them in their new home. So in go the traps. So they're not completely on the bottom. They're resting probably half the way down in this bin. And uh, the bin is probably, well, it's fingertip to elbow deep on me. So however tall that is. And then I'm gonna get them some more castings. I'm gonna sprinkle just the tiniest bit of alfalfa meal in there. And then I'm gonna add my next layer of castings. Mm. 
if you start seeing your castings mold, then that means that there's nothing alive in there to uh, keep the biology going if the mold is, is still living. So I know there are baby worms and I know there are cocoons in here, so if I keep this moist enough to keep them happy, I will keep the biology happy until spring. I will keep the lid on this pretty tightly and I will check on it about once a month. And if I find any worms, check on this every month or two. And if I find any worms, I'll rescue them and put them back in a bin. Here's an example of me letting them get too dry. And you can see there's some kind of dry mold there. That's not good, but it is fixable. And that's what's important is that you can fix it if you do let it get too dry. Basically, you can add more water and then the worms and the microbes that are in the fresh castings that you just put in there are going to reinvigorate the castings that maybe got a little bit too dry. So all is not lost, you can fix them. In the case of a worst case scenario and you need the castings pretty quickly, you can actually put some worms back in and have them redo them very quickly for you and then just sift the worms out. As I've said, worm farming is, I'm not perfect by any any shape of the imagination and I probably I've added a gallon of water to this and it probably could use some more so the idea is to keep these guys fed until probably April so they've got you know four or five months to go so I do really need to keep a closer eye on this in order to keep these microbes nice and uh, happy all right well back to blue Okay, here we are where we have added worms and food recently. And we're going to do the same thing we did with the other end. And we're going to move everything over to make room for the next bin to be added to blue. We might get a worm ball, so fingers crossed. All right, so this is the stuff. It goes older to newer. So the closer we get to that end, the closer we are to possibly getting a worm ball. There's a little bit of a worm ball there. Make sure I'm fluffing, taking the big pieces, moving them down. I'm seeing a little bit of gnat problems in here. I'm gonna have to get my gnat traps. I have a, a video on how I make them. Super simple, you just need a glass or a mason jar and some vinegar and a little dish soap and that is all I use. And it is insane how well it works. I leave the area, come back in a week, and, um, you know, then you get a bunch of dead flies and you can refresh it. Okay, doing good. Keeping the dry stuff at the end. Okay, had those avocados that uh, never did ripen. Looks like the worms are getting into them already, so that's good. Put that at the far end. Keep, oop, I feel something squishy. Feel something squishy. Big squishy. Holy mother of pearl. Oh, oh my. Where does it even end? Good lord. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to, I'm trying to show you guys this. Get off, get off. <laughs> oh my god. Ready? Huh. <laughs> that, and it's still not done. It's, look at that. Oh, wow. I know, some people are like, that is so repulsive. You're doing this with your bare hands. Oh, look at that. Is that not a happy place? Look at those happy worms. Good worms. Oh my gosh. I've got goosebumps. That is like the biggest worm ball I've ever seen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> look at that. And more. But wait, there's more. Holy cow. Yeah, there you go. Oh, wait, and I messed this up. Look, they were inside the avocado. And for anybody who doesn't eat avocados, just buy one anyway, just so you can experience this. 
They literally hang out in the avocado just like a stuffed baked potato. I didn't do this. Anybody that does eat out of avocados, don't tear up your stuff. Put them in whole. The worms love it. Look at that. Look how happy they are. Why wouldn't you want to make your worms happy? All right, so enough of my worm craziness. <sighs> gotta, we gotta keep moving. Got worms to adjust and bins to move and the worm ball actually is still continuing here. I just have to get under it. So still more worms. I'm expecting at this point, there's probably close to 25 pounds of worms in this bin. The 20 that was already here and then uh, I've added, I think two bins, two extra bins to this. Added the uh, 2022 no grit bin came in here. Added uh, lasagna bin. So blue, oh, that's right, because somebody called it the Garfield bin. That was so awesome. Like, I wish I would have thought of that. Blue eats lasagna. There you go. Sweet potato uh, shreds appear to be a slow food. Just for notation, not cooked. I just peeled it before I made my Thanksgiving sweet potato casserole. This was the queen size sheet. Still kind of in process. I'm gonna still let it roll. But we need to make room because the next bin to get eaten by blue is the DIY bin. Gonna harvest that and we are going to put that in here this week. Why did I do that? Get over there. Um, so the DIY is gonna get harvested and the worms are gonna get moved over here. Uh, there still will be a DIY system, but that is where the, spoiler alert, that is where the red wigglers are going to go. Red wigglers are going to go vertical. Oh, I think there's another worm ball under here if I can get to it. And here's the lasagna pieces. I need to get them out of the way so I can get to the worm ball. Mega squishiness. There we go. That is the worms probably that were part of the lasagna bin last time. There's a little bit of food left. It smells a little sour, but nothing, nothing horrible. Definitely nothing horrible. Paper leaves that are kind of matted. Okay. Got to make the room down here. Let these guys all get settled. Um, let's see. By tomorrow, give them a chance to uh, settle into their new configuration. And then tomorrow we will harvest the DIY bin and hopefully anything that is uh, left over will, will go in here with blue. Looking at all these avocado pits, I'm starting to think I have a problem. But they're so good. Now that I have found a a source for really awesome not Haas avocados. So long as it's not super cold and freezing, they will send them to me. And for pound for pound, it's really not the different price than I pay for a Haas avocado up here in Illinois. All right. There we go. So now we have made this much room in blue. Excelente. All right, so hang on, we're not done. But wait, there's still more. This episode is never going to end. No, okay, it totally is. But one more thing, we need to talk about the leftovers that we sifted and what do I do with those and how do I get the worms to eat them? So hang on, let's go look at those. Okay, so here we are at the bin with the leftovers and I have been adding water and getting this to a nice sopping wet consistency. And the idea here is to get all of this rehydrated so that when the worms hatch or the little worms that made it through the screen are ready to eat something, this is nice and wet and they can perhaps break this down a little further. Now, I will come in here and make sure that there's no pooling water because I did add about a gallon and a half of water in here or four liters. And you can see it is very, very wet but I want the water to soak into all of these little nuggets so that the worms can get in there to get something to eat. 
Additionally, I've got a little bit of alfalfa that I'm gonna spread in there just to get everything started again, to get the microbes happy because they have been allowed to dry out so that I could sift. And I'm just trying to create like the best environment for when the cocoons hatch and then all the little worms can get to work and start eating this stuff again. Now I won't look in on this. I will for the next month or so to make sure the moisture is stable. But once the moisture is stable, I'm gonna leave this alone and I'm not going to look in on it for another four months. In about another month, we're gonna look at the ones that I set up over the summer and we'll see how they're doing and how well they've harvested. And uh, we'll be able to see what I can extract out of a leftovers bin, but that's, that's for later. So if you like blue, I have a whole playlist that you can watch right over there. And if you're not interested in that, that's too much. I got another video right over here that you can watch. All right, guys, well, if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you wanna know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring the bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.